discussion about the concepts of partial discharge, in particular partial discharge with respect to uh, air voids in resin encapsulated three-phase transformers. So uh, to start with, what we'll talk about is uh, two parallel plates with 200 kV between the air. Okay, so we've got an air insulation medium here and the distance between the two plates is, let's say, um, 10 centimetres. So, with a 10 centimetre uh, gap across air, the stress, which is voltage divided by distance, will be 200 kV divided by 10, which gives you 20 kV per centimetre. Now, that sort of stress uh, won't cause a breakdown of the air insulation because we know that, that the, um, we need to get to at least about 25 kV per centimetre to cause a flashover. Across the air medium. But what we'd like to do is introduce an, a medium that actually is, is, gives us an improvement in the insulation structure. So what we do, we've decided that we've put in epoxy and air. And we'll put 200 kV, say there, and we'll earth the other end. So we've got two mediums, one is the air insulation and one is epoxy. And let's say that that distance there is, sorry, one centimetre and that distance is nine centimetres. Normally you would think that that is a better insulation structure and stronger because epoxy has a, has a much higher uh, breakdown stress or inception stress than what air has. But that is a bit of a misnomer because the stress in the, the electric stress in the air is equal to the electric stress in the epoxy multiplied by the, multiplied by the, um, uh, the permittivity, the permittivity for epoxy. And the permittivity of the epoxy is approximately equal to three. So we've got the voltage equal to the stress in the air times one centimeter plus the stress in the epoxy times nine centimeters. Okay, so that then equals air times one plus um, E air divided by three times nine. And that then gives you E air times four. So if we've got 200 kV equal to the air stress, the stress in the air in, in kV per centimetre times four, so E air equals 200 divided by four gives you 50 kV per centimetre. Now that is much larger than 25 kV per centimetre. So what will happen, actually, you've actually increased the stress on the air by the introduction of an extra insulation medium, and that will definitely flash over, whilst this one won't flash over. So now we take the information that we've just learned from the first stage of this video and we and we actually build it into a real model where we've actually got an epoxy block here but with an air void in it and the air void consists of a number of capacitances one between there and there a second one between there and there another one between there and there and then one just in the void and we want to model that so over here we model this capacitance as that as, as that capacitance there physically like that, 
this one as being the capacitance in there and this one being that capacitance and that capacitance combined. That's the equivalent circuit of this insulation block. But we've got this void here. And what happens is we've got this applied voltage, which is here. And we apply a voltage. Okay, that's the applied voltage, the HV, and then we've actually, we plot the voltage which is actually occurring across the gap, which might be like this, due to the capacitance. But what also happens is, we have a stress inception point. So what happens is, as the voltage rises across the void, it gets up to VI, and VI down here, it gets up to VI and then collapses because the voltage across, the, across here reaches more than 25 kV per centimetre in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, across this gap or across this void and it collapses and then it builds up again and then it collapses and then it builds up again and it collapses and this is the discharge, the partial discharge that we're seeing in the insulation block and that's exactly what you see when you're measuring with a partial discharge uh, detector the voltage builds up, collapses, but it's happening at high frequency it might be happening say 30 kilohertz up to maybe 100 kilohertz. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that because the equivalent circuit that you've actually got is you've got a high voltage transformer, you've got a filter inductance, and then you've got your detecting circuit, you've got your coupling capacitor, and then over here you've got your actually test object which looks like this which is the same as this here so this is the low voltage side of the test the high voltage this is the high voltage side of the testing transformer this is the, the filter to stop any noise coming through from the high voltage transformer and from the generator and you've got your detecting circuit so what what tends to happen, this is the detector, this goes to the, to the crow. Or your uh, Hayfley detector. This is the pickup, this is the pickup coil. But what happens is, is depending on the inductance of the transformer, sometimes it can't keep charging and discharging and it takes a while and it, because of the, uh, the high impedance of the uh, of the uh, the transformer supply on the on the on the oscilloscope, which is a deciduous figure. What will be happening is, in particular here, we'll be seeing discharges here and discharges here like that. And then, as the voltage is raised higher here, these will become wider, and their value will be increasing. And this is in picocoulombs, measure of energy. So in other words, the energy which is, we're only represented as a voltage here, but the energy will actually be increasing in the discharge or the ionization in the void of the, of the, um, of the air. This means that when we build an epoxy insulation structure, it's very important that we don't have an air void because the stress in the air void is accentuated by the difference in the permittivity of the insulation materials, epoxy versus air. And as soon as we reach inception voltage, which is typically about 25 kV per centimetre, 
the air gap will flash over and ionise, causing a partial discharge in the complete insulation structure. And then hence, on the, on the detecting partial discharge circuit, we'll start to see not only higher picket coulomb levels, but we'll also see up, up. the bandwidth will go larger, will go wider. Until such time as this starts to, this will completely break down, and then it will start to then eat away ionize the the insulation of the of the epoxy and then eventually as that keeps ionizing here and ionizing here it'll probably crack and it will crack and then fail and then the whole insulation structure will fail so in three phase epoxy insulated transformers it's very important that the epoxy uh, the partial discharge is measured and it should be measured after all high voltage tests. And it, it, it normally is measured, you normally take the voltage up to 1.8, bring it down, times rated voltage, and you, you, you pre-stress it at 1.8 times rated voltage, and then do the measurements, that's for about 30 seconds. And then for about three minutes, you hold it there and you actually measure the partial discharge at 1.3 times rated voltage. And that is a brief analysis of partial discharge measurements in epoxy insulation structures and epoxy three-phase transformers.